Choosing between MacBooks has become very confusing in 2019. Isn't the 12-inch MacBook a follow-up to the MacBook Air? Then why is there a new MacBook Air in 2018? Isn't the 12-inch MacBook lighter than the MacBook Air? So shouldn't their names be switched? Why are there touch bars and non-touch bars variants on the MacBook Pros? Fret not, New Caveman is here to help you. The 12 inch MacBook is the most portable model here, weighing only 900 grams and occupying the smallest footprint. It is the best companion for any business traveller or digital nomad constantly on the go. The design is the thinnest with tapered ends. It feels feather light and feels negligible in your bag. Despite the name, the new MacBook Air is the second lightest model here, weighing at 1.2 kilograms. It is still thin, tapered and portable but not as elegant as the 12-inch MacBook. Coming in last would be the 13-inch and 15-inch MacBook Pros weighing from 1.4 kilograms to 1.8 kilograms. The MacBook Pros do not have taper ends and generally feel thicker when carrying around. The positions are reversed when comparing the processing power. The 12-inch MacBook is the weakest here with a Geekbench multi-core result of 6000 plus. The MacBook Air comes in second with a multi-core score of 7000 plus. The winner of the bunch would be the 15-inch touch bar MacBook Pro hitting a multi-core score of 22000 plus. For people who do not understand these numbers, take my 4K video encoding for example. My 12-inch MacBook takes almost an hour to encode a 30 minutes 4K video while the 13-inch MacBook Pro took only 5 minutes. Finally, all base models start off around the same pricing with the Touch Bar MacBook Pro models making the biggest jump of $500 from the base model pricing. The MacBook Air will seem like the cheapest model at first, but take note that it comes in the 128GB configuration, while the 12-inch MacBooks comes in at a more useful 256GB configuration. A maxed out 15-inch MacBook Pro will set you back at 7000 plus. The 12-inch MacBook comes with only one regular USB-C port. The MacBook Air and non-touch bar MacBook Pro comes with two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports. And the touch bar MacBook Pros comes with four Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports. The number of ports should not matter because either way, you need to purchase an additional USB-C hub to use all legacy non-USB-C accessories. Just remember to get one with USB-C charging. The transfer speed however matters as the 12-inch MacBook can only transfer at 5 Gbps, powering only one 4K external display. It does not support an eGPU. The other Thunderbolt 3 models can transfer at 40 Gbps, powering 4x 4K displays or 2x 5K displays, and they can support eGPUs, expanding the capabilities of your MacBook. The Touch Bar MacBook Pros come with a multi-purpose touch bar that replaces the F1 to F12 keys. This is easily configurable for every application that you use. There is also a Touch ID sensor for easy biometrics and also a built-in T2 chip that allows Hey Siri to be always on. The new MacBook Air comes with Touch ID for easy Apple Pay and passwords while the 12-inch MacBook Pro does not come with these bells and whistles. To be honest, the touch bar is useful 
but it is not something that you cannot live without, so it shouldn't be a deal breaker. Most professional users are already very proficient with hotkeys on their keyboards anyway. The Touch ID, however, is extremely useful for Apple Pay and passwords unlocking though. So, how do you choose? The Performance Over Price Ratio Many people like to use a performance over price ratio to get the most bang for their buck. In this case, you can use the average Geekbench score and divide it over the price and you will get the model that is the cheapest for its performance. But is this really the best way to choose your laptop? Not for me. You will end up with the 2017 non-touch bar MacBook, which is neither portable nor powerful. The bigger is always better philosophy. I always envy people who swear by this philosophy. It makes things very simple for them. For these people, it would be a straightforward 15-inch MacBook Pro decision. Why? It has the biggest screen. It has the best performance. It has the longest battery life. It is a no-brainer. But again, this does not work for me, as the 15-inch MacBook Pro is too bulky for my needs. Time since last update. For Apple products, it is usually wiser to get the devices that were just released. If you are buying a model that is you overdue for an update, you risk a huge price drop within months of your purchase. Both the 12-inch MacBooks and non-touch bar MacBook Pros are more than one and a half year into their product cycle. There is a high chance that they will be updated by March or June 2019, especially that they are still using 7th Gen Intel chipsets. The 13-inch MacBook Air and Touch Bar MacBook Pros were only just updated and are fairly safe to assume they won't be updated again in a year. Every MacBook model is essentially a performance versus portability trade-off. With the 12-inch MacBook, you compromise performance for portability. And on the other spectrum, the 15-inch MacBook Pros compromise portability for performance. But then again, everyone has a different threshold of performance and portability. So, use the 80-20 principle. Are you a student that needs to move between lecture theatres on an hourly basis? And the only performance you need is for your thesis and presentations? Or are you a professional editor who is desk bound and you need to churn out 4K videos on a daily basis? Be comfortable to compromise something that you only use 20% of the time so that you can be happy 80% of the time. Trying to make a 50-50 performance portability ratio will only make you unhappy half of the time. Is this the only device or your second device? I'm usually a person who uses a maxed out performance desktop with an ultra portable laptop. That way, I have the best of both worlds. If you prefer one device setup, then it wouldn't be too wise to compromise on performance. Do also note that modern day MacBooks can be easily docked into a desktop setup using the USB C monitors and the eGPUs. You can Google up MacBook setups for inspiration. My own personal choice is the 12-inch MacBook. This is the most misunderstood MacBook model of all time. It has the worst price to performance ratio. It is widely regarded as a device not for serious use. But trust me, 
it is good enough. I use it as my main workhorse for photo and video editing. Not just 1080p video, but 4K video. All my YouTube videos are created on it, and my experience is as smooth as butter. The only caveat is when I need to export my 4K video, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour. To me, that is a compromise I am willing to take, as it is only a once a week task. And I also have my Maxell iMac to do this job. Otherwise, it is such a joy to carry a laptop that is only 900 grams light. Once you are used to this weight and footprint, there is no going back. I tried replacing my MacBook with the latest 13-inch MacBook Pro on two occasions, and I had to return them to Apple every single time. Sure, the MacBook Pro can render my 4K video in 5 minutes, but I do not churn out videos on a daily basis. I rather enjoy the beautiful form factor of the 12-inch MacBook sitting on the Starbucks table enjoying a cup of coffee with plenty of desk space left. So, what do you think is your sweet spot and perfect MacBook of choice? Please comment below and we shall discuss. Cheers!